with Starfleet expanding its uniform designs into a more comfortable and less formal look for starbases and space stations, with the possible outbreak of hostilities looming on the horizon, Starfleet Command would once again redesign its uniform to a more militaristic feel, before once again returning to a bright, colorful uniform style. Hello and welcome to Trek Facts, a fun and fast informational series on the fundamentals of Star Trek. In today's episode, we're taking a look at Starfleet uniform designs from the years 2370 to 2379. By the year 2369, Starfleet had introduced a new standard duty uniform, a less formal and more worker-friendly uniform design which reversed the familiar two-tone arrangement of the previous uniform style. The new uniform was a loose-fitting two-piece black jumpsuit with the division color on the shoulders and a purplish-gray mock turtleneck shirt underneath. Under the uniform was an undershirt in the same bluish-violet-gray color of the mock turtleneck. Comparable to a utility jumpsuit, the uniform was first used aboard space stations, before eventually coming into service aboard starships in the year 2371. Like most Starfleet uniform designs, this particular design also had variants. An engineer's overcoat created which mirrored the uniform design, with gold shoulder coloring as well as it provided small pockets for tools for the engineering officer to carry around with them. A maternity version of the uniform was also available. It consisted of a uniform top that, instead of being tucked in, as with the standard uniform, flared out below the waist. For situations that called for a Starfleet officer to serve in hazardous battle operations, a ground combat uniform variant was available. Made of a harder, more durable substance than the standard uniforms, the combat jacket was worn like body armor over the standard duty uniform, and consisted of a black, textured material and a thick line of the officer's division color running across the yoke. Gray excursion uniform variants were also available. Marked by a stripe of the officer's division color across the chest, these jumpsuits were tight-fitting and trimmed in a metallic silver material. Allowing for more taxing physical activity, these uniforms were worn with specialized boots that better suited mountainous or more rugged terrain. Similar to the excursion type uniform design, a training uniform variant was also created. Primarily a gray short-sleeved jumpsuit worn with specialized boots, this uniform style lacked any rank insignia, and were used in situations in which increased physical activity warranted something less confining and more flexible than the standard duty uniform. Marked by a stripe of division color running across the chest and down the sleeves, these uniforms had low collars and were also tight-fitting. Other variants such as flight suits were also available. Consisting of a sleek, tight-fitting jumpsuit, the flight suit design was black and gray with stark white shoulders and red trim. The uniform also featured a high collar and distinctive closures running down its front. The Starfleet Cadet uniform was also modified to keep it distinctive from the standard uniform. Retaining the same basic shape and style of the previous design, the new uniform was now gray instead of black with division color shoulders. Rank insignia would continue to remain the same for these new uniform designs. The comm badge, however, would be updated to the new Starfleet insignia. Instead of the delta being placed over an oval backing, the new comm badge would have a sleeker design by placing the Starfleet delta over a rounded rectangle-like backing with slits cut into it on either side of the delta. Division colors would also remain the same, with red representing command, gold representing operations, and blue representing the science and medical divisions. Flag officer uniforms, however, would remain the previous style introduced in the mid-2360s, and this use of the older uniform style would not change until both uniform designs were phased out for yet another new design in 2374. In 2373, the standard Starfleet uniform was once again modified. Maintaining the same basic shape and division colors, 
but reversing the colors on the shoulder and turtleneck. The blue-gray shoulder area was now quilted with vertical stitching, and the division colors were also displayed on each wrist as a colored hoop. With this new duty uniform design, so too came minor variant designs. Commanding officers had a variant design similar to the captain's jacket variant worn in the 2360s. A new vest was also introduced aboard starships and space stations. Bearing the same quilted yoke as the duty uniform, though extended lower, below the comm badge, this sleeveless, low-necked vest allowed the wearer a more casual appearance. The mock turtleneck shirt worn beneath this new design was made of a heavier material than that of previous uniform designs, and now being in one of the three division colors. Beneath this, a blue-gray t-shirt or sleeveless t-shirt was worn, similar in style to the undershirts of previous designs. For harsh or desert conditions, specialized robes were worn to protect against sunlight and provide comfort in hot and humid conditions. Consisting of off-white colored robes and hoods, pants and short sleeve shirts trimmed with division colors, this particular uniform served when the standard duty uniform may have proved uncomfortable or inappropriate for said environment. Specialized boots were also part of the desert uniform, also off-white, suited to mountainous or more rugged terrain. As with the previous generations of Starfleet uniforms, a plain mustard-colored jumpsuit used by technicians and utility workers was also available. And although retaining the basic design of previous versions, the cadet jumpsuit would also get an update, with slight design changes such as quilting being added to the division color yoke and the division color cuffs being added to each sleeve. Also, instead of being a one-piece jumpsuit, this new uniform design would be split into a two-piece style similar to that of the standard duty uniform. In 2375, a new dress uniform variant was introduced, this time a stark departure from previous styles. Throwing out the old color scheme and long jacket, the new style favored a white short jacket with gold trim and a quilted gray center section worn over black trousers which also were trimmed in gold. Division colors were less prominent than in preceding styles, appearing as piping around the collar and the wide bands of the cuff and side seams of the trousers. While this uniform was standard to all duty officers, captains and flag officers wore white in place of the blue-gray in the center section. Flag officers had wider cuff braids with a solid white line running through it upon which the rank insignia was attached. Flag officers would also get an updated uniform design, and this new design would retain the basic look of the standard uniform design, but with a few minor changes. The cuffs on this design were wider than that of the standard uniform, and displayed the flag officer's rank insignia. A belt was also introduced to the uniform, with either a plain gold rectangular buckle or an oval buckle displaying the seal of the United Federation of Planets. Gold piping was also added to this uniform. With Starfleet winning its war against the Dominion, as well as various other conflicts, Starfleet would again see a state of relative peace fall over the Alpha and Beta Quadrants. As a result, Starfleet would once again revisit its uniform design styles, and in an effort to represent their organization as primarily a scientific one, would once again redesign them. And by the late 24th century, the new standard uniforms would bear a striking resemblance to the uniforms of the early 2370s, though with minor differences to give it a fresh new feel to lead Starfleet and the United Federation of Planets into the 25th century.